PE in the classroom again. I know, I know. But remember, PE has been changing a lot recently. But one of the many things that I love about PE is that no matter the situation, the amount of space, or the amount of equipment, you can always find a way to make PE fun and enjoyable. So I've got just the game for you if you're stuck in the classroom and it's called Classroom Soccer. Let's get started. Classroom soccer. I know what you're thinking. Coach, how are we supposed to play soccer in a classroom? Well, I'll tell you how. Use what you have. It's as simple as that. Use what you have. I'm going to show you a couple of things that I think are best, but if you have something that you think might be even better or work better for you, use it. You can use this awesome two dimensional soccer ball, which in my opinion is something that's perfect for younger ages and also for the classroom setting so if you don't know what two-dimensional means that just means that it is something for instance a soccer ball it's an item that is two-dimensional now so as you can see it's not round like a soccer ball would be but it has the length and it has the width so it's only two faces technically and it's flat now so that's what two-dimensional means. So this is something that won't bounce around your classroom like crazy and will actually slide on your floor but still be a soccer ball. Crazy and awesome, I know, right? So this is one of my favorite things to use. Or you can use this awesome indoor soccer ball that is also something if you don't have a two-dimensional uh, soccer ball like I just showed you, then you can try uh, if you have one, okay, a really soft indoor soccer ball, okay, has a softer cover, and it's something that is uh, great for indoor and a classroom setting. You know, it's uh, might be better to use the two dimensional, but if this is something that it, you actually have, or maybe you want to look into getting something like this, I would also encourage both. This is my second favorite, the hockey. I, I like to call it a hockey puck, but the two dimensional soccer ball and this soccer ball, the indoor version is something that's great for the indoor setting and the classroom setting. But if you don't have access to any of these and you still wanna try this game out, well, guess what? You can still try it out with a good old paper ball. And if you wanna obviously make the paper ball a little bit bigger, I don't wanna to waste too much paper right now, but try a paper ball out, make a bigger one and if that's something that works good for your class and um, it's something that you have access to, you know, everybody has paper, um, try that out. And I've even had some success using a beanbag. So if you have any type of PE beanbags, that's something you could also try. And if there's something else that you think is just as good, give it a shot and try it out. So the last bit of advice before we start talking about the details of this game is to be creative. So teachers, coaches watching this, and you're looking for some new ideas um, for the classroom setting, and if you wanna try this out, and let's say you don't have the two-dimensional ball, you don't have the soccer ball, um, and maybe you do have a paper ball, maybe you don't have a bean bag, or maybe you wanna try something else. If something else is working better for your class, try it out, be creative. That's my best advice. The game is simple, but first you wanna make sure that you tell all of your students to always stand by their desks okay and you always want them to understand that they have to stay in their designated desk area <clears throat> and to always tell them that not to run across the rooms go get a ball always stand by their desks okay and the easiest way for this game to work and i think is the most efficient is how all the kids know the game is going to start is when you start the music of your choosing so when the game starts Whoever has the ball first kicks the ball to the closest person to them. And once the ball comes to you, then you want to kick it to somebody else and keep going and keep going. Now, you don't want to be the last person with the ball, and I'll tell you what happens in a second. But remember, boys and girls, you are in a classroom. Do not kick the ball 100% of how hard you can kick it. 
you just want to tap it with the side of your foot and just quickly pass it to somebody that's next to you or closest to you. That doesn't mean you're kicking it as hard as you can. That just means you're being very quick and just tapping it with the side of your foot. Now, if one of the balls or uh, whatever item you decide to use for this classroom soccer game, if one of the items is closest to you when the music stops and let's say uh, one of your classmates or one of the students kicks it to you and then the ball or item stops right by your feet or it's closest to you than to the person next to you, then you get the ball. And that means you have the great honor of doing an exercise or a task that the teacher or coach tells you to do. So the whole point of this game is you don't want that ball or item to be near you or close to you or you don't want to have it when the music stops. But here's the thing, you don't know when the music's going to stop. And that's what's fun about this game. It's up to the coach or the teacher um, performing or who's in, in charge of this activity to either be really fast and start and stop the music or take a while, let everybody get involved a little bit more. And it's just random. And that's what makes it fun. You're trying to get rid of the ball. And so whoever it's closest to, you have to do either jumping jacks or push-ups or maybe you have to hold your right arm up for uh, five minutes or you have to have your arm up for the next round of the game or you have to stand on one foot. Who knows? Be creative and make it enjoyable, make it fun, and that's what this game is all about. Now, once those exercises or, or tasks or funny tasks are completed by the students that had the balls or items closest to them, once they do what they were told to do by the coach or teacher, then you get to start the game off. So I know you may be like, oh man, it feels like a loss. I had to do this or jumping jacks or whatever the task or exercise was. You get to start the game off next. So you get to tap the ball or slightly kick it to the person next to you or someone that's nearby and then the new round starts. And that's what's fun about this game is that it just keeps on going. It's quick, quick, quick. It could be super fast. It could be a little bit longer. And that is really up to the teacher or the coach. So remember boys and girls, follow the rules and have fun with this game. So there is no specific time limit for each round. That's up to the teacher or the coach. But if you are one of the um, teachers or coaches that are, gonna, that are gonna be leading this activity, um, my best advice to you to get everyone involved continuously is that if the if you have a larger number or maybe um, the balls or items that you are that you chose to use aren't um, getting all your students involved enough, then what you could do is to start the items with different kids. So if you know student A, B, and C. Um, have already started the game off, you know, two or three times, or maybe the balls, you know, keeps coming back to them. Then maybe start the balls or the items on the opposite side of the class and let them get involved more. So it just kind of depends. You have to be always watching and see how the game goes and to, you know, help the kids and direct them and make sure they're all following the rules. And of course, the most important thing is to make sure they're having fun and to make sure that they are all enjoying this game. So Thank you for watching this video and to and talking this game out with me. So let's go on to the next part of our video. I hope you try this game out tomorrow, next week, in the near future, um, on a rainy day, or maybe you are someone that is uh, having PE in your classroom a lot more than you usually do. Then give this game a try, throw it in the mix. Um, if you like like this video, you like this game, hit that like button down below. And of course, if you have any other awesome ideas that can help this game with your class, um, you know, instead of using the two-dimensional ball, indoor soccer ball, which are my two personal favorites, um, a paper ball, or even a beanbag. If you have a different one, let me know in the comment section down below. So your question of the day answer from a couple weeks ago is... Let me reread re the question for you. What has 88 keys? Yep, I said 88. What has 88 keys but can't open a single door? What? I know a couple of kids were telling me, coach, that does not make any sense. Well, guess what? The answer is a piano. And you were like, maybe you're like, huh, what? Remember, a piano 
those keys on the keyboard on the piano those are called keys i know you may forget like oh that's what they're called it has 88 keys normal piano has 88 keys so and none of them can open the door <laughs> so i i hope that didn't make you mad or like oh my gosh coach what are you doing with these riddles right um i'll give you another another guess or another chance so here's the new question of the day for this upcoming week so listen carefully see if you can get it give me your answers down in the comments let's see what it is so the new question of the day is if i have it i don't share it if i share it i don't have it what is it i'll say it one more time if i have it i don't share it if i share it i don't have it what is it hmm remember it's a riddle and give me your best answers down below or if you're one of my students at promessa tell me in the hall or tell me during pe or tell me when you see me all right everyone that is your coach lopez activity for this week and remember it's called classroom soccer give it a try use what you have and of course most importantly have fun and i hope you have a super duper awesome rest of your week and remember to stay safe have fun and have a great week everybody bye see you next time this video is sponsored by sns worldwide making it easy to help people play and learn since 1906